Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, a popular kit-built airplane is discontinued. Instrum is flying its second prototype TH-180 helicopter. X-Core idols workers. Hello, I'm Christopher Z. Odom. It's June 1st, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. For those who are involved in the home-built airplane movement, this announcement from Lancer closes a chapter with a popular kit-built airplane. Lancer has announced that it will no longer be offering legacy kits after 15 years of production. In a post on the company's website, Lancer said that the final kit will be a retractable Lancer Legacy Reno Race version. According to Lancer, closing down the Legacy production line was a tough decision but necessary. The company said in part, we have come to a point where a significant investment will be necessary to continue to production and after 15 years we feel it is time for something new. What is next? The company said that while they are not ready to even suggest what they are thinking, you can be sure that it will not disappoint those who have come to expect innovation, performance, and beautiful designs. Lancer says that there are still three kits available, including the final Renal Race variant, and they will continue to support legacy kit builders. Enstrom Helicopter has now continued flight testing of their TH-180 helicopter that is intended for the training market. The testing is being resumed with the second prototype aircraft. In February of this year, the first prototype, TH-180, suffered significant damage when a mechanical problem forced the aircraft down with no injuries to the pilot or persons on the ground. The first flight of the second prototype took the air under control of Instrum test pilot and the senior technical fellow, William Taylor. Taylor took the aircraft through a standard production type acceptance, including all the hover and forward flight checks, such as tracking and rigging checks. Taylor reported to have said it flies great, now we can resume certification. The market needs a robust, forgiving trainer. Intram's third TH-180 flight test vehicle is in production, with production expected this summer. With two aircraft flying, Instrum is focused on an accelerated certification flight test cycle. After the break, X-Core Lynx production stopped. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Errol TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at errol-news.net. While the Lynx suborbital space plane was at one time the top priority for x they have now suspended work on the Lynx spacecraft and idled many of its employees who were working on the space plane project. Although much of the spacecraft had been assembled, only one wing has been fabricated, and the company reportedly does not have the necessary capital to manufacture the second wing. x had eventually hoped to develop an orbital spacecraft based on the Lynx suborbital design, but they were passed over by NASA for a development contract in its commercial crew program. The website ParabolicArc.com reports that the company is apparently refocusing its primary efforts on development of an upper stage engine for ULA. With some 2,000 Errol TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Errol TV classic episodes. Now, I've been a bottler since I was seven years old. I'm 70 years old today. It's been an exciting world for quite a few years. The Academy of Model Aeronautics has represented model aircraft flyers since the 1930s. In this interview between ANN's Jim Campbell and AMA's President Bob Brown, 
We take an inside look at the challenges model aviation is facing today. After these messages, California takes another shot at passing anti-UAV regulations. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A California legislator has revived her efforts to put some kind of statewide ban on UAVs despite the objections of the industry and many users. A similar attempt at state regulation of UAVs last year was rejected by the governor. Discovery Air Defense Services recently celebrated significant pilot flight hour milestones on the company's Alpha Jet A4N Skyhawk and Westwind aircraft. The company owns the largest privately owned fighter fleet in the world and celebrates flight hour milestones at each 1,000 hour interval. EASA is organizing a conference for June 15th through 16th in Cologne, Germany to update the aviation community on the implementation of the agency's air crew action plan regarding the German Wings Flight 9525 accident. A proposal for regulatory action is expected later this year. Apparently, in reaction to new labor laws in France, French air traffic controllers are set to strike over the weekend. Added to this, Air France pilots have voted to strike later this month over the same issue. A fully integrated DTEC track disrupt defeat anti-UAV defense system developed by a trio of British companies has been selected by the FAA for evaluation at U.S. airports as part of the Pathfinder program. The FAA is seeking a way to defeat drones around airports. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The Valdez short fill takeoff and landing contest is sort of like golf. The lowest score wins. And that's what happened last month when Bobby Reedon of Sterling, Alaska won the short takeoff and landing competition in the alternate bush class at the 13th annual Valdez Fly-In and Air Show. Breeden, who has been competing in the STOL competition since he was 17, made a 40-foot takeoff and 55-foot landing to claim his second consecutive victory in as many years with a low score of 95 feet. While the actual Valdez Alaska competition occurred last month, this was not your only chance to see it. The popular flight competitions and demonstrations will be featured once again at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh this year. Several Valdez competitors, including Breeden, will showcase their aircraft in competitions similar to those had at Valdez. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations 
every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource, I believe I can fly.